Hello everybody and welcome to the section 2.3 lecture. Um, first of all, I just want to say for all those of you that are actually watching these and listening to these, I, I really do thank you because um, it, it's it's letting me kind of stick to my, to my plan, to my schedule for what I want this class to look like. Um, I know that it's not ideal, I know that it's not what we really want to do, but those of you that are that are watching these and getting something out of these, it, it's really helping helping me to, you know, kind of keep it going and, and make sure that that we're all doing well. Again, stay tuned to the uh, to the end. We will have a, a code word, and I think this week, if you get the code word wrong, I'm going to start taking points away on the uh, on the reflection pages. So, just wanted to let you know that I, I think that it's important that we are watching and listening. Um, I, I'm trying to make these as quick as I can. I realize that sometimes they get a little bit long, but I am I, I am working my hardest at it. So, uh, anyways, today we're talking about scientific notation, and the, the you know this is what we kind of dealt with last time, but this time we have negative powers of ten. So let's go ahead and take a look at at what negative powers of ten are doing in scientific notation. So first, I just want to look at this example, and, and this is a great example to kind of see how things, uh, how things work. The number that they have on this one is 2.345, and they're, they're going to adjust it several different times um, with positive and negative exponents. So with 10 to the 0, remember the, the biggest thing is anything to the 0 power. This right here, it equals 1. So you're multiplying this by 1. So you get 2.345. Okay. Uh, the next one, they're multiplying it to the first power. And as we learned last time, when we multiply things to, the, uh, to positive powers, it makes it a bigger number. Or it's representing a bigger number is kind of the, the better way to, to think about it. Because we're not changing this number at all. It's still the same number. Whether we look at it as uh, 2.345 times 10 to the first, or 23.45, those are the same numbers, okay? And the biggest thing there is that 10 to the first is just multiplying by 10. And when we multiply by 10, we move the decimal one place to the right. Okay, the next one, uh, we're multiplying it by 10 to the second, and 10 to the second is 100, okay? So that means that it's moving the decimal two times to the right. So how do I, how do I move it three times to the right? Well, it's going to add another zero to that, to that ten, that one, ten, one hundred. Um, we need this number here to be a thousand, okay? And we get that out of ten to the third. Okay, we moved it three places to the right. Good to go. But that's all what we looked at last time. On this one, on the right side over here, we're looking at, at well, we have zero again, or ten to the zero, which is which is one. So we get two point three four five. And if we multiply, or if we multiply by 10 to the negative first power, uh, 10 to the negative 1 is 0 0.1. It's 1 tenth. For the same reason that we talked about, um, gosh, a while ago now, with negative exponents, that like puts our number into the denominator. So really, this 10 to the negative first is 1 over 10. Well, that's 1 tenth. That's the decimal. That's the fraction. Okay. This would be 1 one hundredth, and, and it's going to do its own thing. So when we multiply by 10 to a negative power, it's actually moving the decimal the other way. Okay, so that turns 2.345 into 0 0.2345. And then, la and then this one here, we've got uh, to the negative second power, so it's going to move it two times to the left. Okay, then to move it three times to the left, we're going to have a negative third power up here. Okay. Um, now this whole kind of explore activity started with this problem up here, uh, talking about uh, the diameter of a human hair, and then they kind of went off on this tangent. I don't know why, but this A is just kind of like a, a little side story, so to speak. Um, so we want to move the decimal point in 0 0.0000025 as many places to the right as we need to, to get a number between 1 and 10. And the question is, what is that number going to be that is between 1 and 10? Well, hopefully we're saying that it's 2.5. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. 
So then kind of like what we did the, the time before, if I go 0 0.1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 5, divided by 2.5, let me do that here for us. I'm going to probably cover that. Oh, no, it's there. 1, 2, 3, 4. Let me double check. Am I getting that right? We have 1, 2, 3, 4. Yep. 2, 5 divided by 2.5. I get 0 0.1, 2, 3, four zeros and then a one. So I get 0 0.1, 2, 3, four zeros and then a one. All right, and then we want to write that as a power of 10. Well, powers of 10 uh, that are negative turn into decimals that end in a one and, and the rest are zeros, okay? Because like 10 squared, like I said, it's one one hundredth or 0 0.01 and this one would be 0 0.001. So another way that you can kind of think about it, and, and it kind of uh, makes it a little bit quicker, is the, the negative exponent, if I take, I don't want to say take one away, but, but take one number away from three and I get two, and that's how many zeros I have here. So if I have four zeros, I kind of have to go the other way and add one, but I get 10 to the negative fifth. That's what I get there because there's four zeros. So four zeros before the one means 10 to the negative fifth. Now I know there's five zeros. I'm definitely not counting the one before the decimal point. So before I get that question and everybody kind of confused on that. Now I will say also that this dividing by thing, um, it's not typically how we do it. It's just a way to show us uh, what happens. And I know in the first scientific notation video, uh, we had some people kind of confused on that. Like, why are we dividing? What are we doing here? We're just trying to see kind of the, the, the value difference between those two numbers, okay? So then it says combine your answers in B and C. Um, so we got 2.5, because that number still needs to be between one and 10, times 10 uh, to the negative fifth power. Now, if I had to type that, okay, if I had to type that answer in, uh, th this is getting kind of important because, um, you know, we, we do need to know how to do this. For the times, I'm going to say that we should use an X. Now, realistically, at one point, we're going to use this little star, this little asterisk, um, but we're not there yet. I'm good, with the, I'm good with the X. It just looks a little bit better. Uh, 10, and then that caret key, I told people, uh, this goes back to section 2.1. I told you to hit shift and six. You hit those at the same time, and that, that gives you that. I put them in brackets to kind of mean hit this key. <laughs> Some people actually put their exponent in brackets. It doesn't really work. Um, and then negative five. And whether you want to put that in parentheses or not uh, is kind of up to you. But that's what, if I wanted you to type out the answer, like on a, on a homework, that's what I would want to see. Um, and I am okay, you know, really, if it ends up being this. It can kind of be any combination of, of these two things. If you maybe you didn't remember the parentheses, I would think that that's okay too. Okay? But that's how we type those exponents. And I want to keep talking about that because I, I want to leave some open-ended problems for you. Um, for the reflection questions, when you move the decimal point, uh, how can you know whether um, whether you're increasing or decreasing the number. I kind of hate this question uh, because we're not really changing the number, so to speak, when we use scientific notation. We're just changing the look of a number. But they just mean, if I'm just given a number, say, um, I need my pen back, don't I? Say I have the number 1.23, actually, I'm not gonna put the decimal there. Put the decimal between the one and two. If I have the decimal right here, um, how can I tell whether I'm increasing or decreasing the number? Well, basically it comes down to the fact that if I move it left, okay, if I move the decimal however many places left, I'm making the whole number in front of the decimal smaller, right? It, if I move it left once, it goes from, the, the whole number here is 12. If I move it left once, now it's one, okay? And then if I move it right, I'm making it bigger, okay? So I would say moving the decimal left 
gives a smaller number and write oh geez sorry about that smaller number and then write my pen's lagging out a little bit come on baby um, right gives a bigger number okay <clears throat> and then the second one here says explain how the two steps in moving the decimal and multiplying by the power of 10 leave the value of the original number unchanged a lot of words there but really again it's just saying that that uh, in our example up there 0 0.12345 is the same number as that 2.5 times 10 to the negative fifth. Okay, those two things are the same thing. Okay, the 10 to the negative fifth just changes the where the decimal point is. It just moves it. So it's not that we turned 0 0.000025 into 2.5. We didn't do that at all. We never even said that we did that. Okay. That's part of our answer. We want that 2.5, but we also have to have that times 10 to the negative fifth in order for those numbers to be the same. Okay. So writing a number in scientific notation to write a number that is less than one in scientific notation, we move the decimal point to the right um, and use a negative exponent. That's kind of the summary there. That's usually these pink boxes are some kind of a summary. Let's look at the example that they give us. Um, the average size of an atom is a very small number of centimeters across. And uh, we want to write that in scientific notation. So we want a number between 1 and 10. And then also remember in decimals, if you're given any number, you can add as many zeros over here as you want to. It's just more writing. Okay, In science, they would say, well, there's... When you're doing that, you're, you're kind of changing the, I don't know, the, the precision of the number. It's a little more precise because you're, you're checking that it's zero for so long, but that's a long story. Um, so what number do we have that's between 1 and 10 here? Um, and that's why they use 3.0. It could have been 3. I would be fine with 3, uh, but they're saying 3.0. And then count the number of decimal or the number of places that we move the decimal point. Um, again, that's just a counting issue. Uh, you just have to see how many times it takes you to, to move it over there. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We kind of screwed a couple of them up in there. Um, eight times. Another method that you can use is uh, if you want to think about it this way, you can count the zeros. that are after the decimal point, there's seven zeros here. So, and it's always going to turn into this. Count the zeros and add one. Okay, so we, we have seven zeros, so we have to move it seven times to get to the end of the zeros, and then one more time to get past the number that we really want. Okay, and that's always going to be the case. Uh, that's kind of nice, but we have to, you know, remember that Yes, I counted the zeros and added one. Then I have to remember that it does have to be negative. Okay, that, that exponent has to be negative. So here we go. Uh, critical thinking. When you write down, or when you write a number, <laughs> wow, when you write a number that is less than one in scientific notation, how does the power of 10 differ uh, when, from when you uh, write a number greater than one in scientific notation? I would probably say greater than 10 in scientific notation, but um, the, the very, very small numbers, you know, we're talking about diameter of a human hair, um, size of an, of an atom, those kind of things, um, those are uh, very small numbers, okay? Um, and, and when we're writing small numbers, we use negative exponents. So the easy answer here is negative exponents. There we go. <clears throat> write each number in scientific notation. So for this first one, I'm going to go ahead and go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I have to move it 5 times to get 8.29, and that's times 10 to the negative 5. Yeah. Uh, for the second one, I'm going to use a different strategy. I'm going to count the zeros. There are 1, maybe I go 1, 
two, three, four, five, six. Six zeros means I have to move the decimal seven times. So I get 3.02 times 10 to the negative seven. That doesn't look like 10 to the negative seven. Um, there we go. Uh, a typical blood, uh, typical red blood cell in human blood has a diameter of approximately a very small amount of meters. Write this diameter in scientific notation. Um, we can go ahead and count the spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six times. So seven, or you could write 7.0, I'm okay either way, times 10 to the negative six. Okay. Uh, what was I gonna say? I thought it was good. Maybe it wasn't. All right, sweet, let's move on. Um, writing a number in standard notation. So again, we want to be able to go both directions here. Not only write something in scientific notation, but also take it out of scientific notation. Um, so here we're talking about platelets, uh, 2.33 times 10 to the negative 6. So I've got 2.33, and I'm going to move the decimal six places. Now again, remember that these are very, very small numbers. Now that doesn't mean like negative numbers. We're not talking in negative number language here. We're actually just talking about the size of the number, whether it's close to zero being very small or huge, like in the millions, trillions, that kind of thing. That would be the, the you know, the, the bigger numbers. Um, so, so this number is going to be very, very close to zero. Um, so 2.33, I want to move it six times. One, two, three, four, five and six and then I just put in the zeros oh I, I remember what I was going to say before now um, writing writing these very small numbers in scientific notation does have one drawback from the other way the other way when we write not when we write really big numbers we get to do things like put in commas um, after every three digits you know we don't really do that in in very very small numbers okay so that's kind of a downfall but another strategy that you can use here, since I want to move it six times to the left, I know that I'm moving it once past the number that I have, the non-zero number. And so then there's one minus six zeros here. Sorry, six minus one, probably say it that way. So there's five zeros here. That's another way, kind of a strategy to, to make life a little bit easier. All right, some reflection questions here. First of all, explain whether uh, 0 0.9 times 10 to the negative fifth is written in scientific notation, and if not, we want to write it correctly. Um, for one of the most basic reasons of scientific notation, this is not in, uh, not in scientific notation. So it's not in scientific notation. Um, and, and the reason why, this is not a number that's between 1 and 10. It's close, but it's not between 1 and 10. Now, there is a tricky way to write it in scientific notation without too much work, but there's a lot of memorization that goes on. So my suggestion is write this number in, in standard notation and then go back and turn it back into scientific notation. So here's what I mean by that. We want 0 0.9 times 10 to the negative fifth. So I have to move the decimal five times to the left. One, two, three, four, five. So this number is really 0 0.000009. So then I'm looking at 0 0.1, 2, 3, 4, 5 zeros and a 9. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 zeros and a 9. So now I want to move it. I want to move that decimal to be after the 9. So I have to move it back one, two, three, four, five, six times. So we end up with nine or 9.0 times 10 to the negative sixth. Okay, um, and, and that's, again, it's not great. It's obviously there's a couple steps in this, um, but sometimes you just need to kind of go the brute force method. And, and for that, I'm talking about turn it into standard notation, and then back into scientific notation. All right, which number's larger? Probably the easiest way to do that. <coughs> I'm sorry. Uh, easiest way to do that is write them both in standard notation. Then we ought to be able to tell. 
So this one's 2 times 10 to the negative 3. Um, since it's 10 to the negative 3, I know there's going to be two zeros in front of the 2. 0, 0, 2. And this one is uh, 3 times 10 to the negative 2. So I'm only moving this 2 times. So there's one zero in front of the 3. And there we go. Okay. Um, so what does that do for me? Which one's bigger? Okay. If you had a number line here, which one would be farther to the right? It's kind of the best way to answer this question. Zero is there, one is there. This is like uh, three pennies. This is like a fifth of a penny, right? If 0.5 is here, um, you know, my scale could be whatever it needs to be. Uh, but if 0.5 is there, 0 0.03 is like way down here. And then 0 0.002 is like really close to, uh, really close to zero, all right? So 0 0.03, um, I'm just going to write it here, 0 0.03 is larger. And I would say the number line kind of explains that. Okay. All right, let's look at some examples here. Um, these are your turn problems, but I'm going to go ahead and do them. Uh, you can pause if you want to and do it. I'm moving decimal six times. So one, I already lost count. One, two, three, four, five, six. Decimal there. One, two, three, four, five zeros. Got a tag attacking me. Um, one, two, three, four, five zeros. Uh, one, zero, four, five. We do want to write all those digits that they give us. Um, so that's the moving it method. On this one, let's go and look at how many zeros there would be. If I'm moving it five times to the left and I have to move it past this nine for one move, then I need four more moves, so that's going to be four zeros. One, two, three, four, nine, nine. Okay, Jeremy measured the, the length of an ant as one times two, sorry, one times ten to the negative second power. Uh, I want to write that in standard notation. So 1.0, I guess. Move it twice. So we get 0 0.01 meters. All right. So now for a code word, again, if you get it wrong, I'm going to take points away on your, um, on your video reflection. Since there's uh, only one point for the video reflection, it might take all the points away. Get it right. The word for today was covered in a previous problem. Uh, it is atom. A-T-O-M, atom. We're measuring small things. I felt like it fit. Have a good day. We'll see you in class.